Okay, guys. So I'm here to share all you know, all the passion, all the knowledge I I managed to acquire uh, during my two plus uh, years of study. So if you've got any questions, please interrupt me at any point and just just shout and let me know that you've got you know your your burning question. Okay? Because I I I know what I know about Spark, but it's you to bring all the goodies uh, to you know and, and make my knowledge. Uh, production ready or, or production, how to say, uh, uh, looking. So today's talk is about monitoring structured streaming using Web UI. I'm pretty sure that you've heard about, you, you've heard about Web UI, which is, which is the view on your one single Spark application. I remember my days, my very early days when I started working with Spark, uh, I left, you know, Java EE world where we had this application server. I was working with, you know, Tomcat, Tommy, you know, WebSphere, uh, Glassfish, all the other, you know, big big players in in J J2E space. And 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 to be honest, I didn't know that there was this big space. You know, uh, that that was kind of like a parallel environment or parallel world uh, to me. So I got used to seeing one view on all the applications. Then. You know, Spark came in and showed me that one application can have its own Spark, its own application web UI. That was kind of surprising to me because now the question was, okay, what if I start, you know, thousands of applications? What's going to happen? So what's going to happen, guys? You will have thousand plus web UIs. Correct? Correct. That's obvious, right? So. Is it, is it expected? Yes, it is expected because that's how Spark and Matei and the team, the crew at uh, Databricks, designed the system. One Spark application, just one web UI. It's enabled by default, and that's what I'm going to show you today. So, I'm, so welcome to my talk. I'm Jacek Laskowski, independent consultant, still independent. Someone pays for my time, so I'm independent as much as I can. But I'm specializing in Spark and Kafka exclusively these days. So for the past two years, I've been only uh, on projects with Spark mainly, plus Kafka as the source of sync, plus uh, you know data, databases or storages like Cassandra or you know or Hadoop, uh, Mesos, DCOS, you name it. Okay, because Spark and Kafka need deployment environment. Correct? Correct. That's obvious. So I've been doing this for the past two years, and I've been doing these services. I'm, I'm trying to contribute to Spark uh, more often, but you know how, how life is, you know, coding, uh, talking, you know, traveling, having kids, wife, you know, that, you know, that, that all could make your life a little bit more miserable, uh, you know, funny. So I, I hope you... You found my, my writings uh, quite useful, and I, I'm, I'm mostly known by my writings, and uh, Mustang Apache Spark is one of them. I've got uh, four books currently being written. Uh, the other is Spark Structured Streaming, and that's where you can find more information about uh, you know, the topic I'm, I'm going to cover today plus, uh, and more. Okay, and I'm trying to catch up with, uh, you know, Gerard and other, you know, people who, you know, who, as you can see, all, all timers, you know, are way beyond my, my reach. But I'm trying my best to, to catch up and, and, and see what I can do and help you, you know, on Stack Overflow. And please, if you have any question about Spark, you can use user mailing list, but I truly believe that Spark uh, is that Spark's tag on Stack Overflow is much better fit for your needs because it, 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 it's where you know, people uh, try to be as aggressive with the answers and, and contributions as possible. It's not the case about user, user, Spark users mailing list where you can see that your email got almost no response. Why? Because people are busy. On Stack Overflow, world is Kind of different. Okay, so Web UI. This is the topic of our talk, so of my talk. So Web UI is a view on what's happening under the covers of your application. Yes, under the covers. Because Web UI is nothing less, nothing more like big, huge, giant Spark listener. Okay? Have you heard about Spark listener before? Some people are nodding. Yep. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Okay, so, so there are some people who heard about Spark Listener, and Spark Listener is a mechanism, notification mechanism, uh, or notification, yeah, it's, it's an it's a interface which you can use to intercept all the information that Spark ever emits to the world. And this world is also Web UI. So Web UI is just fancy web application, not very sophisticated, and showing you as much as people developing Web UI thought might be useful, okay? So if you need more, you can have more, because not all information is available through this Web UI, or at least it's not in the way you would expect, okay? But you can always rewrite it uh, looking at the source code and, and using this interface called Spark Listener. Okay, five minutes passed. So, we are using Web UI for monitoring and, uh, you know, inspecting what happens with, in our application, in our Spark application. So, usually, when you start uh, doing your sparking, uh, you will open your Spark shell, and you or PySpark, or whatever language you are using with Spark, and you get Web UI open for free. You don't have to configure anything, but have 4040 open, already to accept this Spark connection. If Spark, if uh, 4040 is busy, uh, you know, uh, some other process uh, took it, you know, 4041 and, and on, okay? Until, you know, Spark decides to, to give up after 10 or 20, 20 uh, tries. Okay, so localhost 4040. So, uh, as I said, Web UI is just one big Spark listener, so it intercepts all the information and keeps it in memory. That's why your driver, because that's the place where Web UI runs in, uh, this is the, the hosting environment for Web UI, that's why you can see that the driver needs more, more memory than other parts of your system, of your Spark uh, deployment, okay? It might be surprising, but it depends on how many you know, events are being intercepted and kept in memory, okay? So the driver, you know, Usually, you, you, you consider drivers something like, you know, okay, there is some, some kind of an uh, orchestrator, but this driver is a hosting environment for Web UI, so losing your connection to, web, to the driver means that you lost your connection to Web UI. Yeah, okay. So you've got these tabs and pages, and before, uh, before I show you another slide, let me switch to my environment, to my Spark shell. Why? Because I, I believe that, you know, a mixture of slides, uh, pictures, words, you know, uh, waving hands, and Spark Shell will make this uh, knowledge sync or, or last uh, longer. So this is my environment, and I enabled some, some debugging information, so this is just uh, our lovely environment, Spark 2.2.0. I didn't risk to, uh, uh, to, to start with 2.3.0 snapshot, uh, which I built today, uh, because, you know, you know how things uh, may, may, may end up. So, uh, Spark session, and after I started it, I've got my lovely localhost 4040. So, I've got my web UI, and this is the, the view on what happens in your application or in someone else's application, okay? And by the way, it depends on your deployment environment too, because if you, are, if you deployed your application to Yarn, uh, Mesos, or Spark standalone uh, cluster managers or cluster offerings, you may or may not have this 4040 available. Definitely, uh, localhost is going to be different, right? Because you know, your uh, node or cluster nodes are different. Well, it depends on your configuration, but okay, let, let, let's keep it like this. So you've got these tabs, job, stages, storage, environment, executors, and SQL. And let me ask you this question. This storage is empty just like other tabs. Why? Sorry? Because it's lazy. Because it's lazy. No. No operation is Exactly. I did not run, launch, any Spark jobs, okay? So it's empty. Yeah, Russ is correct. It is lazy, or it lazily instantiates all the information. And asking specifically about storage, how often did you find storage useful? I mean, have you ever used storage for anything? 
who has ever used storage tab to monitor Spark application? Just four, six, ten people uh, use it. And this is kind of uh, cool because I'm pretty sure that you, you, you found it already. You can rename all your uh, uh, persisted RDDs to your liking and have nice names and then differentiate between different cached uh, uh, data sets. If you've never seen it before, let me know after, our talk, after my talk. But the, 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 point, the, the main topic of my presentation, or the, the main focus, is on this SQL tab. This is where we see all the executions, OK? So it's empty because no execution, executions happen, OK? No execution happened. So let me start one simple looking uh, uh, query. So Spark read stream format rate is a brand new. I hope rate was available in 2.2 already. I'm not sure about it. So we'll see, OK? So format rate, and then what else? Ah, load, and then write stream. And what I like about, about Spark structured streaming is this kind of uh, mm, uh, uh, way of programming I, I, I call or I refer to as design by exception or, or programming by exception. So you will see uh, two exceptions in a moment and they will remind me that I need to do something else. And if you spend enough time with, with, you know, with uh, Spark uh, uh, structured streaming, you will immediately realize that you missed this or that, OK? So, so I like it, uh, especially during presentations. Uh, so write stream format. What format should I pick? Console, obviously. And then trigger, because Spark tries to be as quick as possible. So you, know, you, you will get all the you know, information on the, on the console every millisec. I don't want to do this. So I, I use something very cool. I, I haven't seen it uh, much promoted yet. Processing time, processing time, and then 10 seconds, and start. And something uh, I found very, very useful uh, while writing my structured, uh, structured, queries, uh, structured queries is this trigger processing time 10 seconds. I didn't know that there is also another trigger called once. And you know what? Flink was right. Yes, people from behind Apache Flink was, uh, were right. They said something like this, batch processing is just a special case for streaming. That same is available in Spark, but somehow it's not widely announced yet. I'm pretty sure that Databricks and the crew behind Spark are working on something pretty cool. Uh, and, and this is to show you that all batch processing is just streaming in trigger once. And OK, so let's, let's see this in action. So when you press enter, you will get this error not found. So you will get this trigger not available. So you do import org Apache Spark SQL streaming and underscore done, almost. What we miss is this 10 seconds, right? OK, so import Scala concurrent duration underscore and done. Oops, done. So we started our query. And I enabled debug just to show you what happens under the covers. And you know what? Every 10 seconds, you will get your SQL query executed. So how is that different from having a cron job executing your batch query every 10 seconds? Every 10 seconds. No difference. Yeah, th there are differences because there are optimizations which I'm going to uh, uh, explain in a moment, but that's pretty much it. Spark currently will execute your SQL query exactly as if you scheduled your query as a cron-like uh, uh, job every trigger interval. Okay, so it's pretty much like what Gerard uh, presented to you about uh, Spark streaming. It's that it, th th there was this batch interval, this explicit uh, uh, you know, uh, parameter for uh, Spark streaming uh, queries. Now we've got triggers. And to my surprise, 
Trigger is not open interface. It's not available to be extended, so you cannot have something like uh, trigger uh, executions three times and done and finish. It's not available. It's not possible with the current uh, Spark uh, uh, release, at least with 2.2. And I haven't seen something like this coming. So uh, don't expect it. So we've got two execution modes. Okay, so now I've got all this information about my, my query. So why did I do this? Well, I wanted to show you uh, this, this nice looking tab, this SQL. That's the, that's the topic of our, my, my talk. You know, you see all the completed queries. And as you can see, you will have two queries per batch or per trigger. Trigger, batch, same. Okay, so streaming data set is nothing else but good old batch data set plus this special treatment by, by this infrastructure called Spark Success Streaming, okay? It's special, uh, it, it's wired in the code of Spark SQL to execute this SQL queries every trigger. So you see that I've got this uh, uh, queries and as you, uh, may have noticed, you will see that you will get two queries per batch, per trigger. So if you look closely, you will see that uh, the, the, the last two uh, executions were for tr the last trigger, and it was 10 seconds past the you know, previous trigger, okay? So we, we, always constant, we will constantly get two queries per my structure streaming query, okay? Yes. Very good question. And what's the difference between query, SQL query, and a job then, right? Let's define this term called, this, 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 this notion of, of job. So job is something that, you know, Spark uh, uh, offered you with RDDs, right? And this is the lowest level execution you need. Well, there's this task, so, 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 you, the lowest uh, uh, possible execution unit is task. It, uh, you know, composing task will give you, stage is not available at this point. So we'll give you, yeah, stage, yeah, stage, and job. So answering your question, we are going up, we are going higher with this higher level API called Spark SQL. So the people behind Spark SQL decided to bury all the, you know, low-level details of how Spark executes uh, uh, queries, and they created this notion of query. And query can have one, or oh no, zero, or many jobs. That's the answer to your question. So in this particular case, you can see that this query had three jobs. Why? Because this job used sync, the source, uh, sources and sync that, that made these jobs alive or, you know, they, they created, they triggered these jobs. Why? Because the developer of, this, of the sources and sync decided so, okay? So it depends on, so the answer, how many jobs will I have per query or how many queries will I have per streaming query is, it depends, okay? You will have to scroll through the source code of every possible streaming query and sync, uh, streaming source and sync, and see what happens under the covers. So, going, going to this, uh, to, to answer your question uh, 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 directly, as you can see, you've got one job, you've got another job, and another job. They all create this one single completed query. But then, you know that there are two queries per one single streaming trigger, okay? So one trigger, one or many queries with zero or many jobs, with one or many stages, with one or many tasks. That's how things look uh, uh, now, okay? Okay, moving on. Uh, so, uh, wait, 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 wait. Where's my, where are my slides? Ah, oh, they're here. Uh, no, 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 come on, come on. Uh, I, I lost it. Yeah, uh, what is this? Uh, no, come on. 
Uh, what is this? Uh, no, this is about Bitcoin. And no, come on. Uh, what was that? Yeah, 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 thank you. Okay. So, so we've got this web UI. And as I said, this is one big Spark listener. So they added, with Spark Structured Streaming, they added new events that you can catch, that you can intercept, and do something you know, special. This, this special events are for Spark Structured Streaming. So all Spark 2.2 did was to you know, use the existing infrastructure with RDDs, with tasks, stages, uh, with, with, uh, uh, with batches, and they plug in this, this extension called Spark Structured Streaming, OK? OK, so we've got Web UI. It's enabled by default, unless you uh, uh, disable it using the Spark UI enabled. Uh, you've got this port, property too, so you can control you know, where you have this uh, Web UI available. But it's highly dependent on your deployment environment, so master URL. Uh, by default, it's local, but you can also use Mesos, um, uh, Yarn, or Spark uh, standalone. So you've got this task I showed you already. So you've got job stages, storage environment, executors, and the last but not least, SQL. I believe that SQL should be the default tab now, because that's where people start their journey into you know, Spark Structured Streaming and Spark MLLib. And I, I'm a true, true believer that now Spark SQL and Spark Structured Streaming and, and Spark MLLib are the main driving forces behind Spark adoption. Okay? And by the way, I believe that uh, Spark, uh, uh, Spark Streaming is that now. It's not uh, uh, publicly announced, but I'm, true, I, 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 I'm, I'm hoping that you know, Spark developers will soon mark Spark uh, uh, Streaming as uh, that, uh, that end, uh, just like Spark Graphics. Okay? But that's just me, independent consultant. So you've got also tabs uh, uh, specific per module uh, for streaming and Thrift Server. OK, so internals. Just before we start, uh, uh, finish our conversation, our, our presentation, my presentation, I'm going to share uh, some insights on how, how Spark executes your structured, squ structured queries. So the, main, the brain behind Spark structured streaming is stream execution. So stream execution is where you can find thousands of lines of code that are specifically designed or written for Spark Structured Streaming. So if you want to see how it looks like behind the scenes, just start with stream execution, OK? Don't get scared. There are plenty of you know, Scala code. And it's, and it's written in a way that uh, there is, there, there is some, some love needed. Uh, OK, so stream execution. So execution environment of a single continuous query. So now my question is, how many queries can you have per one single Spark application? Zero or many thousands? Thousands of queries. Every query will create, will go through all the same optimizations, just like other queries. You know, it depends on what, you're, what you use per, per query, but you will have stream execution object instantiated for this one single streaming query, OK? Uh, so continuous query, streaming data set, same, OK? So streaming execution, execution can have multiple sources, but only one sync, OK? So, and so, so you can join between different sources, or, or, or uh, yeah, between different sources, or you can, you can join different sources and, 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 and stream this data to one single sync. Uh, this, this, this processing will happen every trigger. So every trigger you will see the same you know, things apply to, to your query you know, over and over again. Okay? And then you, the results are added to, to sync. Okay? And it's created exclusively when data stream writer is started. So when is data stream writer started? when you call start on your query, OK? That's why you can't, that's why you are not allowed to use show on your structured query, because show will not trigger this uh, continuous execution. 
So this is stream execution under the covers. So stream query manager, the guy who is responsible for you know, managing queries, streaming queries, will, will start stream execution, and this stream execution under the covers will start one single thread. Okay, thread of execution. So you will have as many threads running on your, on your driver, on your driver, as you have streaming queries. So when you do uh, JSTAC or whatever you are using to monitor uh, threads, you will see you know, plenty of threads. And streaming execution will, every trigger will do this. It will uh, uh, ask all the available sources for available you know, data, will process it proper uh, in, in, in your way or the, the, the way you design it, and then will put this data to sync. And you can write your sources and syncs so you can extend Spark such as streaming uh, uh, in Spark 2.2 and, and, and the, the versions to come. Streaming execution collects information about all the durations, or I call it phases, of executing your query. So you have this, something that's, that's called trigger execution, which is the, the, the entire trigger time, or the time that, that was needed to execute one single trigger, okay? So your, so your query was triggered, and this time from the beginning to the end of this trigger is measured by trigger execution. Then you have this get offset, wall commit, get batch, query planning, and add batch. So all these phases are per one single cycle, one single trigger, okay? Every trigger you will have it. If you wanna see, if you wanna monitor your query, you need to use this last progress or recent progress uh, uh, data structures and know, you know uh, what Spark Structure Streaming collected for you. And the last but not least, incremental execution. This is a special query execution for a streaming data set. You will have as many incremental executions as you have triggers and as you have multiplied by the number of queries. So you can, you can imagine how many objects are created under the covers. So every trigger, you will have brand new in, uh, incremental execution. And Spark tries to make your query as fast as possible by kind of cheating you, or cheating, and replacing something that did not change between triggers and add batch data sets. So all the sources that had no data inside, they were replaced with uh, uh, empty data sets, so you don't have to, you know, ask for, for the data again and again and again every execution. So they, 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 they were so clever, you know, people behind TD, Z, S, X, Wing and others, and Michael and others, they, they were so clever to come up with this, and now they are working on making sure that all this is working continuously, not by hiding the fact that, that they trigger, you know, this execution over and over again, but by truly designing system that will continuously executing your, uh, continuously execute your queries. So we are, we are close to see this SPIP, uh, this, this uh, uh, um, process, uh, this, this change being uh, implemented and merged to, to, to Spark, probably uh, Spark 3.0 or something like this. Okay, so demo time. I showed you Raid to Console. We've got one minute. So let me show you uh, uh, some more queries. Uh, so I'm gonna show you Group By, and that Group By is, is pretty, uh, uh, pretty important because it's the first aggregation that you will see on uh, Spark, uh, with Spark Structured Streaming, and you will learn about something very important uh, in, in streaming queries called output mode. There are three output modes, uh, append, complete, and append, complete, and update. Uh, I'm not sure if update is available in 2.2, uh, but it's definitely coming. So you've got three update output modes, and they will make things a little bit harder to understand. At, at least it, it happened to me. I spent you know, months trying to uh, you know, organize all the things, you know, how they design it. So we've got the last 10 seconds, uh, so I'm gonna show you this group by. So I'm gonna stop this. 
Okay, and now I'm going to use uh, group by with uh, uh, this uh, with this rate stream. So as you can see, what I'm what I'm doing is I'm I'm rewriting my previous query, structured query, uh, by assigning this rate uh, uh, data set uh, or data frame, uh, and this data frame is special. This data frame is is streaming. Oh yeah, it is streaming. That's the only difference between batch and streaming data sets, okay? Well, for now. So you've got this rate uh, streaming data set. Now I can do something like this, group by, and by the way, I wanna group by, so I'm gonna do something like print schema to see what I can group by on. And then I can group by, and then I can use, okay, my value divided by two, and then I can calculate sums of my rates, okay? So I usually call it plural, plural, plural way, just like you would call your table with all the sums, okay? So now, as you can see, I am calculating uh, sums over trigger, over, you know, over this streaming uh, uh, data set. And, okay, so, oops, yep, so what's the problem? The problem is this additional, you know, closing quote. Okay, so I've got my, my sums, and again, it's just, again, it's streaming. So this, this, this feature of being streamed uh, is, is passed from one data set to another, okay? So sums, and then I can, I, I do write stream, and then format is console, and I'm gonna do this every trigger processing time 10 seconds, and I close it and I start it. Okay, so start seconds, 10 seconds, trigger format console, and the last but not least, I'm gonna introduce you to this option called truncate false, so you will see entire you know, uh, timestamp. Okay, so I started it. What, what's the problem? Let's see. Yeah, the problem is expected. This problem is expected. Remember when I said that, uh, you know, uh, I love working with Spark Structured Streaming because it's, it's kind of like programming by exception. You are told what to do, what to fix. This is a, this is a beauty of, of Spark, working with uh, Spark Structured Streaming. You are told how to fix your bugs. So in this concrete example, you cannot use uh, uh, append mode, which is default. You can only use complete. So let's change it to use complete output mode, complete, and you can start it. So as you can see, every trigger, you will get you know, this, this processing uh, happening, and then uh, what you will see, you will get you know, output like this. Value zero, 01, you've got the sum 12, and that, that will get triggered every trigger you defined, so which, which is 10 seconds in my case. And looking at your console, localhost 4040, you will see that for this particular case, you may or may not have you know, two completed queries. You may have three. I'm not sure about it. Uh, uh, things change between 22 and 230 snapshot, which I'm uh, spending much time on uh, with. So, but, but for this particular case, it's exactly the same. Two completed queries per one streaming query with three jobs. Okay? So you've got three jobs. And what I found quite useful, and I haven't covered yet, is that SQL is not that handy as jobs tab as far as you know, knowing what what query triggered this execution? You see this. You won't know whether it's you know a, a rate to console with group by or not. Here, you will get this extra information about ID, run ID, and num batch. Uh, the number, of, uh, the, the 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 ID of the batch that that you are uh, reviewing, and that uses something that's not widely announced in, or, or promoted in, in Spark. It's called uh, job groups. So jo uh, jobs can, can be grouped and can get you know, printed out or, or showed uh, this way in Web UI. So Web UI is sensitive to catch this information and print this in this nice looking uh, uh, format. So you, you got this information about ID. ID is supposed to be uh, fixed uh, if you enable uh, uh, checkpointing. Run ID is different over checkpoints. Okay, that's it from me. 
Do you have any questions? Yeah, I think first let's give him a round of a uh, round of applause. That was awesome. Thank you. Cool. So we have a couple minutes. You know, we're bumping up against lunch here, but we got a couple minutes for for questions. So let's take a couple questions if people have them, and then uh, and then we can head to lunch. But uh, yeah, anybody have any questions? Any questions about this? Yeah. Go ahead and step up to the microphone. It'll be easier. There's one right behind you. Uh, the question is, where can I see the information used to be in the streaming tab? The number of batches waiting for execution and uh, synthesis. Streaming tab. It's not available for Spark Success Streaming. Spark, uh, what, um, so the question was, where can I find this streaming tab that I got used to using, uh, be, uh, used to, uh, with uh, Spark Streaming? It's gone, okay? So just like Spark Streaming, okay? So, so it's, it's different. So, so now you need to, you know, rewrite, uh, re, um, how to say, re, uh, rewire your brain to see things, uh, you know, differently using web UI. So, and so no streaming tab for Spark Sector Streaming. Okay. Any other question? Other questions? Yeah. One Thank more. you. Um, there was a talk about this uh, continuous streaming as well. How does it tie into the structured streaming? This is, this is continuous, uh, continuous processing, but it's continuous in a sense that uh, under the covers, Spark structured streaming tries to be as fast as possible. Remember, we are on JVM, by the way. So, you know, JVM by itself is not real time. So, they, uh, so Spark structured streaming by default will execute every millisec. Okay, right. so, so this trigger time is just one millisec. So it's as fast as, as, as people appreciate. Cool. Yeah? Just you. to add to add to that a little bit, right? He was showing the trigger interval where basically he could control when that batch yeah. starts or when uh, a, a given query begins yeah. executing. Yeah. Continuous processing, basically you can think of it rather than starting a query on set amounts of time, you just start a query and then continually feed data into it, and it's, uh, it's almost like a really long running, it's like a batch that kind of runs forever, basically. And so in that, it will continuously process the information. I guess- I need to comment on it, uh, thank you Bill for this, but it's not that data is flowing to Spark, no. Spark is not uh, uh, push-based, Spark is pull-based. It's, it's Spark to pull data from the sources. So that, that makes things different, okay? That's why Spark needs a storage where this data leaves and, and waits for, for processing, okay? That, that's why Kafka is usually used in architecture for something that I call shock absorber, where all the information is stored in, in Kafka or Cassandra. There is not much different between these systems. And Spark will pull this data for processing, okay? Yeah. Well put. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Okay. Let's let's call it for lunch. Uh, yeah. Let's give him another round of applause too. That was great. Thank you.